after the gastrulation this will leads to the segmentation and the anterior posterior axis specification so these studies the segmentation and anterior posterior axis specification was done contributed by three scientists the edward levis christian naslin walhor eric witches so these are the three scientists who has worked towards the the genes which are responsible for the the segmentation polarity anterior posterior polarity axis specifying genes so this were done by looking at the different mutants which are arised so these mutants have given information about the genes responsible for the by studying these mutants we can identify the genes responsible for that particular segments formation and as well as the anterior posterior formation so for this they have given nobel prize for studying the the segmental specifying genes homeotic selector genes so they are awarded the nobel prize in 1995 so as we have seen that the syncytial blastoderm contains the maternal factors the maternal genes which will help in the initial cleavage process so this maternal genes will be circulated in the cytoplasm and available for the all the nucleus which are present in the syncytial blastoderm blastoderms so syncytial will be uh, blastoderm will be sharing the maternal factors which are present in the cytoplasm so this maternal factors which are present they are present in the form of mrna and then they get translated into a protein and this protein will be helping in the initial cleavages that is till the the cellular blastoderm is formed and this will influence the zygotic expression of certain zygotic genes and the first zygotic genes which will be expressed or which will be under the influence of these maternal factors are gap genes and all these will be responsible for the the process of segmentation and polarity formation so gap genes so the mutants of these of this genes will have the missing of larger segments more segment larger segments of the organism so we will see that this genes are covering 3 to more than 3 segments where this expression of genes are seen so these genes are expressed in a larger segments larger group of cells or larger segments and this gap genes their translated product will be influencing the transcription factors of a another set of genes they are called paired rule genes this paired rule genes will express in every alternate segment again we will see separately that what are the gap genes what are the paired rule genes again in a a separate video so this paired rule genes will be expressing in every alternate segment so this segment where it is expressing it is called a para segment we will see in the coming class that what is the para segment and how it is different from the segment now this uh, paired rule genes will this transcription uh, influence the transcription factor of the other genes which are called segment polarity genes segment polarity genes so this paired rule genes are expressed in seven 
strip patterns perpendicular patterns in the dots anterior posterior axis so there are seven areas where this pedrule genes are expressed from the anterior to the posterior of, uh, of the organism then this will be influencing the transcription factors of segment polarity genes segment polarity genes is expressed in every segment every para segment and finally the product will be helping so one will be helping in differentiating the other so subsequently it will differentiate the other protein so maternal factors will influence the gap genes this is the first zygotic genes which will be expressed under the influence of the maternal character so maternal factors are important in the initial expression of the zygotic genes also so gap genes are the first zygotic genes which will be expressed in the mid blastula stage so gap genes are uh, these genes express in a wider segments like more than three segments it will be expressing so mutants of this gap genes you will see the larger portion of the organism will be missing that embryo will be missing petrol genes this is uh, expressed by the influence of the gap genes so the transcription factors which are responsible for the petrol genes will be influenced by this gap genes so petrol genes are expressed in the every alternate segment this segment which is uh, uh, which is taken here as a para segment so we will see that what is para segment compared to the segment region then this petrol genes will be influencing the expression of the segment polarity genes segment polarity genes will be expressed in every other segment so you will see that petrol genes will be expressed in the se seven uh, uh, segments whereas segment polarity will be expressing in 14 segments so as a whole the drosophila organism will be having a 14 segments three segments of head region three segments of thoracic region and eight segments of the abdominal region now this segment polarity genes which are expressing in 14 uh, different segments their product their product will be influencing the another set of genes they are called homeotic genes homeotic selector genes homeotic selector genes so these are very important for the organogenesis process so from each segment from each segment whatever the organs has to be arise that will be under the influence of this homeotic selector genes so this ultimately all the genes which are present gap genes petrol genes segmental genes ultimately they will be uh, expressing this homeotic selector genes so gap genes pedro genes and segmental genes all this will be finally expressing their combination will be expressing so their combination will be expressing the the homeotic selector genes so if homeotic selector genes are absent you will see that it is devoid of particular organ if segmental polarity is uh, genes are absent then you will see that some part is missing in every segment some parts will be missing in every segment if petrol genes are absent in every alternate segment you will see some deformities are present mutants are present gap genes larger segments are missing if gap genes are absent larger segments are missing and uh, maternal factors is the one which influence all the the genes which are expressed in the organism so this is the uh, this is a process which will be going on uh, during the mid blastula stage to the gastrulation so these events most of the events which you will see that maternal factors before the the fertilization this maternal factors are present and this maternal factors influences after the fertilization process gap genes pedro genes this will be occurring during the the syncytial blastoderm time so before the cellular blastoderm form you will see that gap genes are activated and pedro genes are activated so syncytial if you remember syncytial to the cellular blastoderm 13 uh, cycle 13 cell cycle it will take so before 13 cell cycle you will see that the gap genes and pedrol genes will be activated so this is the stage where the mid blastula stage will occur so first genes to activate is the gap genes subsequently they will 
uh, will act on the production of the petrol genes. Finally, once the the cellular blastoderm, cellular blastoderm form, you will see that segment polarity genes will be activated. So by the time that cellular blastoderm is forming, before that you will see that gap genes, petrol genes will be freely available for the the syncytial blastodermal cells and they will share the the activity one will be influencing the other one set of genes will be influencing the other set of genes so this is how the different genes are present will influence the segmentation in the organism and we will also see how the initial factors which are present maternal factors which are present that will decide the the polarity of the organism so once the maternal genes are specified that maternal factors are specified that is bicoid at the anterior side nanos at the post posterior side hunchback at the anterior uh, side and the caudal at the posterior side this maternal factors will be activating the the zygotic genes and this zygotic genes which are activated they are important for segmentation so segmentation is due to the the activation of the zygotic genes again in turn these zygotic genes are activated through the the maternal influence maternal factors influence so there are three segmentation segmental influencing genes are present the gap genes the one which activates first the second petro genes as we discussed earlier also that segment polarity genes petrol genes segment polarity genes so these three genes will determine specify the the segmentation and later these three genes they are belongs to the zygotic genes will activate the homeotic selector genes so the first genes which is activated by the the maternal factors they are gap genes and there are different gap genes which are present like krupel krips hunchback we have seen hunchback in case of maternal factors also so the hunchback which is present over there that is a maternal mrna hunchback protein so that is the maternal hunchback so this is a zygotic hunchback protein so don't confuse with this so there are two hunchbacks are present one is derived from the maternal factor maternal mrna is uh, contributing and the other is zygotic so zygotic also has the same uh, genes so this is the one which will be transferring to the the next generation so zygotic gap genes you will have hunchback jaint tailless hubbin button head empty spiracles orthodenticles so in this you will see that button head empty spiracles orthodenticles they are expressed or influenced by the bicoid so bicoid protein will be influencing these so wherever the bicoid protein is there that is the in the anterior side you can expect this button head empty spiracle and orthodenticles which are the important for the the head uh, forming segments this will be expressed this proteins will be expressed similarly we will see that in petrol genes uh, there are two uh, categories in this primary petrol genes and secondary petrol genes so primary petrol petrol genes will be influencing the secondary petrol genes and different concentration different combinations and different combinations uh, concentrations will influence the petrol genes expression so gap genes will express the the petrol genes so different concentrations and different combinations of these gap genes will be expressing the petrol genes so in petrol you will have uh primary and secondary petrol genes primary and secondary petrol genes in primary you will see hairy even skip run proteins and in secondary petrol genes you will have fusi tarazu odd paired odd skip slopy paired paired genes and in the segmental polarity genes you will see the engrained wingless cubitus interruptus hedgehog fused armadillo patch gooseberry pangolin so these are the different genes which are present in the gap genes petrol genes and segmental genes now we will take up each one of these gap genes these are very highly dynamic 
set of genes these are these are expressed under the influence of different concentrations of the the maternal factors that is hunchback caudal bicoid and nanos so based on that gradient differentiation like if you see in the anterior side bicoid protein is more so they will express certain gap genes over there and all this where this identified gap genes paired root genes and the segmental uh, polarity genes they were identified from their mutants so those mutants which are arise while studying them they identified that they are specifically these mutants are specifically lacking some segments so from there they have identified so that scientist that edwards levis eric wichers and christian neslin walhart so these three scientists have worked greatly on the different segmental genes which we are studying today so we will see that gap genes are highly dynamic highly dynamic means they are expressed within the with uh, expressed within the uh, different areas and these mutants when they are observed the gap genes mutates they are lacking a larger section segments in these mutants so whenever there there is a mutants in mutation in the gap genes the larger segments are missing so they what it indicates that they encompass so they they cover a larger area a large uh, many segments in a organism so the complete area uh, complete part larger parts or larger segments are missing in the mutations when where there are gap uh, mutations in the gap genes now in the paired root genes we will see that the mutants in the paired root genes if mutation happens in the paired root genes we will see that there is a missing parts in every alternate segment missing part in every alternate segment means first segment and third segment then fifth segment like that we will see that some parts are missing some segment parts are missing in every alternate segments if there is a mutation in the paired root genes and in the segment polarity genes we will see that there there is some parts missing in the every segment so the drosophila organism in the embryo structure we will see that segments are present and the segment is are arised during the gastrulation stage and this segment arised is under the influence of this genes what we are seeing so this gap genes what we are studying this gap genes are highly dynamic so that they are expressed differentially in the in the different segments and before that uh, it was found that it was surprisingly found that the segment what we are talking about here in case of the developing embryo is not the exact segment so when the mutants were observed it is not the complete segment what you see in the adult rather than they have seen that mutation is occurring in the like if you say the segment like this segment is a uh, the this arthropoda organism they are segmental metamere uh, mere uh, segmental organism so this is segment segment so what they have observed is the mutations are seen in the posterior seg uh, posterior side of one segment and anterior side of the 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 immediate segment this is first segment and this is second segment so they have seen that uh, the mutations were observed in the the posterior side see this is a the one segment if you consider this is one segment in the posterior side this mutation was observed and it is continued up to the anterior side of the next segment so this was surprising that the segments which are present in the embryo the embryonic segments what we call as embryonic segments are different from the segments in the adult organism and this segment is a unit this segment is a unit in the embryonic development and this is called as a para segment para segment so whatever the changes what we are talking about regarding the gap genes paired root genes segment polarity genes these are all happens in the in the embryo and 
it is in the parasegmental region so the in the embryo the segment parasegment is the the basic unit segment unit and whereas in the adult organism it is a the original segment whatever we see so in the embryonic organism it is a parasegment which is a basic unit for the development segmentation and in the adult organism it is a segment so don't confuse with the segment and the parasegment segment parasegment is a, a part of two segments anterior and posterior part of the the two segments will leads to a one parasegment so like that we will get a 14 parasegments in the organism so in the drosophila organism 14 parasegments so whatever we are talking about this paid rule genes that every alternate it will be expressed that is in every alternate parasegment region we will see that changes are happening in the paid rule genes and in case of the segment polarity genes in every parasegment it is not in every segment it is in every para segment and this para segments will uh, leads to the segment in the adult organism so this is how the the segment and para segment is differentiated in the embryonic and adult uh, organism and the different segmental genes and all these segmental genes will initiate a process from specification to differentiation so it will specify the segments from uh, it will uh, specify the seg segments from the specification to the determination so specifying committing then determining so determining to become a particular segment is influenced by this uh, segmental genes and as i told you that gap genes are highly dynamic in the sense that each of them will be influencing the other genes in their activity like Initially, the bicoid protein, which are the maternal proteins, which influence the gap genes, first zygotic proteins. So, this bicoid protein, which is present as a maternal protein, see here they will influence, the, uh, they will inhibit the caudal protein. So, this is in the, the maternal protein structure in the oocyte. So, as the zygotic genes are expressed, so these are the zygotic genes which are getting expressed. So, this is uh, Crips, Hunchback, Cripple joint tailless you can see that bicoid protein not only influences the expression of the button head empty spiracular and ortho -dentical. they will also initiate express the uh, they will increase the expression of crips hunchback and joint protein also so this is how they will be inhibiting one protein one maternal protein is influencing many gap genes proteins for activity and we can also see that that if one protein one gap gene protein is present that is mutually mutually inhibiting the other gap gene protein see crips will be inhibiting the hunchback and similarly when hunchback is present keep crips will be inhibited so so their concentration if one concentration is higher that will inhibit the other gap gene product and in the second case if you see that hunchback is inhibiting the cripple and also it is activating so when it is in the lesser concentration it activates the cripple and when it is in higher concentration it will inhibits that's why the arrow inhibition as well as the the activation so then cripple will be also again inhibiting as well as get inhibited by the gen protein so when which protein is in higher concentration that will be, be the, that will decide whether the other gap gene has to be present over that region or not so similarly you will see the tailless will inhibit both joint and cripple so this is the reason that the gap genes are highly dynamic one will be inhibiting the other like hunchback plus bicoid protein they will the expression of these two presence of bicoid and hunchback when these are present in high concentration both are present they will express the joint but when they are present alone when bicoid is present that will express the joint so this is how the there are this all genes, gap genes are plays a like a uh, dynamic role and initial gradient is established by this hunchback protein. So hunchback protein which is uh, also present as a maternal factor is important in establishing the, the gap genes uh, uh, products. So hunchback gradient, protein gradient is important in regulating the hunch, uh, gap genes product 
and gap genes are highly dynamic they are expressed in different regions same protein can express in two different regions of the the uh, segments and they will be inhibiting one another so one e expression will inhibited by the others so like that we will see that these gap genes are highly uh, expressive and the mutations in these gap genes will leads to the missing of the larger segments larger segments in the the embryo as well as in the adult organism the second is the paired rule genes so this paired rule genes are under the influence of the gap genes gap genes so whatever the concentration gradients and combinations which are present in uh, supplied from the gap genes it will influence the paired rule genes for their expression and paired rule genes if the mutations are present in the paired rule genes you will see that every alternate para segment uh deformities are seen so there is a mutation in the every alternate segment so that's why we will see that the segments these para segments are 14 and and if it is affecting every alternate para segments you will see that this expression is in the the strip seven strip pattern from the anterior to the posterior uh, side so in seven different uh, strips you will see that the paired rule uh, genes will be affected not only this this paired rule genes are under the control of the enhancers and regulators here enhancers uh, are the uh, cis uh, regulating elements that are the paired rule genes uh, uh, itself and the regulators are the the trans regulating genes trans regulating elements they are gap genes and the maternal factors so both maternal factors and gap genes will influence the paired rule genes for their expression so this is how the the paired rule genes will be affected and different concentration of the gap genes will be uh, affecting this so gap genes paternal uh, gap genes maternal factors and paired rule genes this all will be functioning before the uh, in the syncytial blastoderm whereas segmented polarity genes is expressed in the cellular blastoderm so uh, as i told you that mid blastoderm stage will ranges from the 11th 10th cycle to the 14th cycle cell cycle so during this different uh, zygotic genes will be expressed first gap genes will be expressed later paired rule genes will be expressed and segment polarity genes will be expressed later so by the time the segment polarity genes are expressed the the cells are undergone into cellular blastoderm so these two stages will be happening in the syncytial blastoderm so the genes which are present the proteins which are present these protein concentrations which are present they can easily uh, distributed among the various uh, nuclei in the distributed equally uh, distributed in the cytoplasm and it can be reached to different uh, the syncytial blastoderm cells and uh, in the by this time the cells uh, goes into the cellular blastoderm that is segment polarity they will already have established some gradient of protein with the help of the gap genes and paired rule genes in the anterior to the posterior axis so already there is a, a protein gradient is established by the time cellular blastoderm is formed and this protein gradient will influence the segment polarity genes for their expression now it is clear that the segment polarity genes are expressed when the cellular blastoderm is formed now the function of the the seg segment polarity genes is to reinforce the the para segment periodicity and the establishment of the cell to cell signaling and by which the cell fate will be decided so in the segment polarity genes some genes are well studied like n grade fingless these are well studied genes which are uh, present in the segment polarity genes so how this segment polarity genes will be established under the influence of means under the influence of the paired rule genes so here here i have shown in the segments the segment adult segments and this is the segments of the the embryo that is para segments that is a basic unit of the the embryonic structure here you can see that segment is this like if you say 1 2 3 4 
so it is not the exact numbering of the segment which is present in the adult organism for convenience i am writing this so if you see that this segment the para segment is a part of the posterior part of the one segment segment 1 and the anterior part of the segment 2 so this makes the the para segment and we have already seen that para segment in the para segment uh, the expression of the petrol genes will be in every alternate para segment see fusi terazo protein is present in every alternate segment every alternate segment and the other segment we have a even skipped gene even skipped gene this is also in the every alternate segment so such the, so we will see that paired rule gene will be expressed in every alternate segments and uh, these segments are para segments and the segment polarity genes which was well studied like here we will take the example of ingrid and the wingless protein uh, wingless uh, uh, genes which are expressed under the influence of this para segment uh, in, under the influence of the paired rule gene segments so paired rule genes under the influence of paired rule genes so whenever there is a high concentration high concentration means expression of even skip or fusi terazo protein is present we will see that expression of the engrel is uh, exhibited means engrel is expressed whenever there is a fusi terazo and even skip protein is present see even skip and fusi para when these two proteins are present express either even skipped or fusi terazo in this case we will see that engrel gene is expressed over the uh, cells and whenever there is uh, these two genes are absent whenever these two genes are absent like this is a line cell line where you will see that this is a uh, cells which are present from the anterior to the posterior side so the cells which are present in the the segments so the place where the the concentration of the fusi terazo and even skipped is less at that place we will see that wingless is expressed so when even skipped and terazo is present engrel is expressed here engrel is expressed and when these two are not present when these two expression is not present then we will see that wingless is expressed probably there is a one more protein uh, a gene which is uh, important for the expression that is paired paired gene which will help in the expression of the wingless now this we have seen that it will enhance the polarity uh, enhance the periodicity of the para segmental region and also cell to cell communication we have seen that by the time the segment polarity genes are activated the cells are in the cellular blastoderm so they are in the the separated the cytoplasm is now separated from the rest of the cells so earlier the gap genes and pedrule genes when they are present they are in the the syncytial blastoderm that is cytoplasm is common in both the cases so it is now critical for these cells which are forms the cellular blastoderm so whatever the expression is present they have to do via the intercellular so cell to cell communication has to be established to maintain the polarity to establish the the segmentation so this is we will see how the how the signaling is established between the cell to cell especially we will take the example of engrel and wingless which were expressed on the under the influence of the paired rule genes so the cells which are expressing the wing wingless and engrel so these are the, under the influence of the paired rule genes so here wingless will be expressed when fusi terazo and even skipped is in low concentration and engrel is expressed when there is a high concent um, when the expression of fusi terazo or the even skipped is uh, expressed so the cell to cell communication will be occurring in this fashion so we have taken the here i have taken the two cells and showed how the cell to cell communication will be carried out so this is wingless cell which is remember this is expressed when the even skipped and fusi terazo is in low uh, means is not expressed and they are the paired rule genes and these are the the segment polarity genes and engrel will be expressed when the fusi terazo and even skipped genes are present expressed 
so uh, these cells so first the n grade cell this is the n grade cell which is magnified here so this has the receptor frizzled receptor which is coupled to the lpr 5 and 6 this will receive the the signal the paracrine signals from the adjacent cells and this signal is the wingless wingless is very similar to the vent proteins in the higher organism you will see we will come across the vent protein so that vent protein is the in the drosophila that is the wingless so this wingless so this uh, includes in the the vent signaling pathway so wingless vent this triggers the uh, to acts via the vent signaling pathway so for vent signaling pathway the receptor for that is frizzled receptor which is coupled with lpr 5 and 6 so before this uh, vent or wingless is uh, absence in that case there is a complex formed axin gsk3 and axin complex is formed along with the beta catenin and this complex will inhibit this beta catenin to enter into the nucleus so this beta catenin in case of drosophila it is armadillo armadillo so once this vent that is wingless will bind to the frizzled receptor it will break this complex break this complex and accumulate the dishelf protein as well as the gsk3 gsk3 so gsk3 in case of drosophila is z w3 z w3 z w3 so this will be this gsk will be inhibited by the d shelf protein and this will get activated when frizzel receptor is bound to the wingless protein so this complex will be broken and finally what you will see that beta catenin is freed beta catenin is freed so this will inhibit the gsk d shelf protein so this is a a vent signaling pathway cascade so you will see that beta catenin which is produced this will be entering into the nucleus bind to tcf transcription factor and expresses n grade same n grade protein and hedgehog hedgehog protein will be ex expressed by the activity of by the action of the this wingless in the wingless expressing cells see uh, n uh, n grade expressing cells see this one n grade so these are n grade expressing cells they are also expressing hedgehog so this hedgehog will act as a paracrine factor will act at a, a shorter distance whereas wingless vent will be acting a longer uh, distance but the concentration will be decreases as it uh, the nearer cells the cells which are closer they will have a high concentration of the wingless as the cells moves towards means as the cells become further their concentration of the wingless will be decreased so hedgehog is short uh, distance paracrine factor they will act on the on these wingless cells where wingless is produced adjacent cells the receptor which uh, to which this hedgehog will be uh, activated it is a patched receptor now patched receptor in general uh, this is this includes in the hedgehog pathway and this includes in the vent signaling pathway and in hedgehog pathway the patch receptor will inhibit in normal condition when the hedgehog is not present patch receptor will inhibit a one more protein which is called smoothened protein and this inhibition will be relieved once it is hedgehog is bound to it hedgehog is bound to it and smoothened protein will release the cubitus interruptus ci from the microtubules and this will enter into the nucleus this will enter into the nucleus and uh, synthesize express the wingless protein and this wingless is the one which again acting upon the adjacent cells so this is how the the cells which are present in the the cellular blastoderm will express the segment polarity genes and how they will be influencing the adjacent cells through the cell to cell signaling uh, mechanism so remember that the engrilled gene which is produce uh, cells which are produced they will be producing hedgehog protein 
is received by the patch receptor patch receptor uninhibit the means uh, release the inhibition of the smoothened protein which in turn activates via the cubitus interruptus will generate the wingless wingless will act upon the will be bind to the fissured protein and they will activate the beta catenin armadillo protein this will uh, increase in the enhance the synthesis of the the engrail and hip jaw so one cell the its own cells the the genes which are present in the segment polarity they will be influencing one another for their expression so they will reinforce the the periodicity whatever it is present with that of the para segments they will increase the period, uh, periodicity so this is how the the segment polarity genes will be working so gap genes pedro genes and segment polarity genes all of these three will interact and they will finally express the the homeotic selector genes homeotic selector genes so this homeotic selector genes are present on chromosome number 3 in two regions chromosome number 3 in two regions and it contains the around 8 homeotic selector genes which are denoted as hox genes h o x hox there are two groups of homeotic selector genes are present which are uh, having eight genes hox genes all together these groups are antenna pedia complex and bithorax complex antenna pedia complex and bithorax complex in antenna pedia you have labial antenna pedia sex combs reduced deformed probis pedia and in bithorax you have ultra bithorax abdominal a abdominal b so these are the the hox genes which are categorized into two different uh, regions antenna pedia complex region and bithorax complex region so in antenna pedia the, the complex region you will see that labial and deform this will be mainly responsible for the formation of the head elements antenna pedia and sex combs will be responsible for formation of the thoracic segments whereas uh, ultra bithorax in the bithorax complex is responsible for the formation of the third thoracic segment so in the adult organism we will see that three head segments three thoracic segments and eight abdomen abdominal segments will be present so in the first segment of the uh, thoracic that is the fourth segment the first segment of the thoracic we will see that a legs will pair of legs will be present in the second segment we will see a pair of legs and wings will be associated and third segment we will see that uh, legs as well as a hat uh, hatless uh, will be present so if there is any mutant in the ultra bithorax that specifies the third segment this mutation will leads to the conversion of the third segment into a second segment so this a uh, very peculiar mutants will be observed if there is any mutations in the homeotic uh, selector genes and uh, it was first observed by william bateson and uh, he called them as a Uh, homeotic mutants so those mutants so before studying the genes before the studying the genes this mutants he has observed that there are some deformities were present so he has given the mutants which are arisen from the this uh, homeotic genes they are homeotic mutants so after that in the late uh, 20th century we came to know that what are the genes which are responsible for this uh, homeotic selector uh, mutants and uh, these genes how they will express so they are very uh, responsible for the the different parts of the each segment so the fate of the segment will be decided by the homeotic selector genes and they are present in two parts and eight homeotic selector genes are present in chromosome number 